Case of the Rose Tattoo. I mean, I assume we're investigating another murder. Extra, extra, read all about it. We could set the clocks by you, Mr. Holmes. Regular in small things only, Forbes. Now, when my brother arrives, please send him in. Very good, sir. Five million souls in London, Watson, and not one of them needs my services. An entire week without work. It's intolerable. Absolutely unendurable. Perhaps I can find something diverting in my room. At least I'll escape your censorious glances. Holmes, I protest. Your personal habits are no concern of mine. Stuff and nonsense, Doctor. Your eyes tell a different story, as if I'd stolen from the alms box. Enter. This just came for you, Mr. Holmes. By bonded messenger, no less. Thank you, Mrs. Hudson. You are a treasure. Hello, it's from my brother. This is most welcome. Please join me at the Diogenes. I require your energy, judgment, and discretion. M. A rather brief note to elicit such a smile. Whatever can he want? Who knows? He's as furtive as a Freemason and as ingenious as Babbage. But a chat with Mycroft at his club is sure to be diverting. He may have work, or he may need help identifying a rare tobacco. Grab your hat, Doctor. We're off to one of the queerest spots in London. Wait, no, Read I don't homes. believe. Okay, I, I... I like that they actually maintain the exact same layout of the, of the previous room. Thanks for dropping by, Mayor B. Um, have a wonderful night. Hmm. Is happening. And he's walking. And he's walking. Good evening, gentlemen. Mr. Holmes is expecting you. Thank you, Fox. Mycroft, mortally injured on account of a gas leak. Such accidents don't happen to people one knows. When I read careless match levels, five flats in Camden Town, or omnibus splatter six in the Brixton Road, those unfortunate persons are known only to God. I defy you to name a single soul who has been victimized in this ridiculous fashion. Lestrade says such explosions are the price of progress. I suppose he has a point. Mycroft on his deathbed at Bart, sacrificed at the altar of progress? The inspector is insensitive and a congenital idiot. Calm yourself, Holmes. Perhaps your brother will disprove the diagnosis. Why do you suppose he asked you to the Diogenes? Perhaps he enjoys my company. Some people do. It was as likely a trivial matter as something momentous. He was like that. Should we try to discover the cause of his summons? What possible significance can it have to me or to him? He is lost to me. Forgive me, Watson. I 
prefer solitude just now. I have no heart for work. I'm no good for use or ornament. I'll find a way to distract your grief, my friend. Perhaps Lestrade has some work for us. This much is certain, London always suffers from your idleness, and you are a danger to yourself. So if we right click, if we right click, we have, we have uh, options. Okay. I would like, turn text windows on. I like subtitles. Um, what font style options do we have? Okay. Transparent menus on or off. Fair, we'll go with, uh, I like that font style. Music, voices, okay. Turn the voices up a little. Save. Let's save. And we'll save as start. Okay, so we have the. We don't have. We have a. Look at the skirt. In all seasons, Home's principal messenger wraps a mangy, moth eating item very like this around his neck. Where is he? Look, inventory. No, now I have an inventory. Okay, money, card, tobacco, timetable, and summons. Mycroft's brief note reads, Sherlock, please join me soonest. I require your judgment and discretion. This typically cryptic. He treats paper and ink with more precious than diamonds. Bradshaw's railroad schedule is indispensable for penetrating the Byzantine mysteries of train travel in an expeditious manner. Okay. Okay. Yes. From this stall, the vendor purveys the times and the gutter press with equal enthusiasm and success. Who's sleeping? Wiggins. Wiggins snoozes in a corner of the kiosk, lacking a traditional home and family. He resourcefully makes his way in the world. For a price, there is little he wouldn't do for home. Pebbles. I don't see Wiggins. Apparently he's here. Let's Wiggins. Wiggins, lad, are you awake? There's Wiggins. There's a scarf. Okay, okay, okay. Just barely. What's your art's treasure, Doctor? My what? Your pleasure, sir. What do you want? You got a job for me? Oh, I see. A, a rhyming language, is it? No. No job at present. It's late, my boy. Will someone miss you? Mr. Jonas keeps me better than me ma would have done. If I'd know, her, something you wanted? No, I'm sorry. I'm not quite myself. Mr. Holmes' brother has been injured. Rotten luck. Her bed, is he? Yes, and Mr. Holmes is inconsolable, unable to work. Worse luck. Sitting makes a sadness stick. Mm, exactly my thought. I want to reinvigorate him, find something that will challenge his intellect. Our job. Mountains for most as molehills to him. Inspector Lestrade's often sniffing hereabouts. Maybe the yard needs help. Keep a good thought, my boy. Okay. It's... I 
think this was the style where they used actual actors to portray the characters. Okay. My house. So we've got we've got an overhead map again. playing five card or three card Monty you see that a mean spirit trickster and police informer his extra his extra legal Missionisms are well known and tolerated by the police. Holmes, who frightens him a little, has used his information to, adva to advantage more than once. No loitering. Mm. Um. Constable, I'd like to nip in for a word with Inspector Lestrade. Impossible, sir. Your local station can handle any police business. Well, this is a personal matter. Mr. Holmes often assists the yard, and I... Save it, sir. It's nothing to me. Just move along. Perhaps you could direct me to someone with more authority? I'm Lord Master of this pavement, sir. Now mind the sign and push off. Really? Really? We've already got the getting into the police station puzzle. What's the good word, Oggy? Out alone, are we, Doctor? Not to turn your end to a game? Oh, I don't really feel up to it. Oh, the calamity at the Diogenes Club. Say no more. Mr. Holmes be on consolation, I assume. He is dispirited, as am I. Very sorrowful to hear it, I'm sure. What about some free card Monty to improve your disposition? It's a game of skill. Not the way you play it, I suspect. Hmm. <laughs> Inspector Lestrade may have matters that require my friend's attention. Move on, sir. We don't want any rough stuff, do we? suggest that the Metropolitan Police Station may temporarily harbor the criminal overflow from Pentington Village Prison. This vehicle is called the Patrol Wagon, perhaps because it can conveys groups of constables to far-flung parts of the city. Despite Augie's cart and the traffic it attracts, the no loitering sign reminds casual passerbyers, passersby that the CID officially discourages dawdling in the district. Okay.
A vigilant constable stands sto stotedly at his post outside the main door of the Metropolitan Police Station. Okay. There's a hydrant. Awkward piece of forged iron is called a water hydrant. The valve can be tapped with a hose, and the resulting water used to douse fires. Oh, there we go. I'd like to get into the yard. I'd like to get into the yard. Can you help me? I can lighten your cares and your wallet. <laughs> can you distract the constable? No go, Doctor. He's a clever and vindictive brute. You're just a visitor here. I have to make my living. Rebecca writes, thanks for the follow. How are you doing? I'm glad you you found uh, the uh, channel. I am. I just started playing Sherlock Holmes and the Case of the Rose Tattoo. If you've ideas of how I might get inside, I beg you to give them up. Three ways, to my knowledge. They're yours for half a crown. Put it on my account. Speak. Commit a crime, marry Lestrade's sister, or change your name to Holmes. <laughs> Lovely. Perpetrate any of three felonies. Beggars can't be choosy. No, they're allowed to throw their money down a rat hole. The Half Crown ought to buy what you know of the Diogenes Club explosion. The police say it's an accident. That's no surprise. You have reason to disbelieve them? Reason don't enter into it. It's an easy call. Who's to say them no? But the truth's worth money, and they ain't asked for an eightening. Beware of free information, Doctor. Might have been some terrorists about, for all you and I know. I heard there's some about. Any more bright ideas, Augie? None that I think you'd pay for. <laughs> well, at least he's honest. At least he's honest now. All right. I do any more talking to him. Oh. 
I believe I heard a young woman call for help. Shouldn't you investigate? Your ears is better than a blind man's, but I'm afraid she's on her own. I got me orders. Wow. Please let me pass. I'm Sherlock Holmes' colleague. Surely you recognize his name? Of course I do. Round here enough, isn't he? Like he owns the place. But if knowing him was a ticket, I'd have half a Newgate prison inside. Lestrade's Christian name is Giles. Only his intimates know that. I must speak with him. Shove off, or I'll have you before the Bow Street Magistrate. Constable, have you heard anything of interest about the explosion in Pall Mall? If you're looking to employ Mr. Holmes, that dog won't bark. The Diogenes case is closed. Fire Brigade said it was a gas leak. But sometimes, Constable, men in your high position, men with great authority, hear things. I'm sure you take my meaning. Well, one lad did remark on the damage, with so little gas being laid on and all. And? Said it looked like the club was bombarded. Some club members insisted on going inside, and they were shocked to their shoes at the damage. I did hear that Mr. Mycroft Holmes had regained consciousness at Bart's. Much improved. Now, please, sir, move along. Okay. But it looks like I can't go here. But I think I just gained a location. Yeah, I think I gained a location on my map. So sometimes this game is about talking to people as much as you can. You, uh, you possibly can. And yes, this, 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 this police is quite... And yeah, uh, Watson walks with his, like, head up in the... It's a weird walk. It's such a weird walk. Okay, what do we got here? We've got, uh, a club, and, uh, what's the street? And we got the hospital. Well, I don't see why going to the hospital. Let's go to the club. This is where the explosion happened. We could probably find a police here. Okay, we got some debris. Let's look at it. Let's rummage. Rummage! Much of the debris is still warm to the touch, although there's no sign of smoldering. Let's look at it. The fire brigade has littered the sidewalk with the charred remnants of the club's furniture, the unsalvageable wreckage await the dustman's wagon. Okay, yeah, this is totally the building that exploded. And here's the fire wagon. The odds of containing a fire in the highly combustible city have slightly improved since the acquisition of six mobile extinguishers. Their steam engines can pump 200 gallons of water per minute. Ooh. What are we, what are we at these days as far as water per minute that we can do? Let's talk to him. Constable, might I have a look inside? The interior is available to those holding proper credentials. Credentials? Surely you recognize me, Daly. I'm Sherlock Holmes' colleague. Yes, Doctor. My orders is that what's left of the club is off limits to all but official personnel and Diogenes members. You mean, if I was a member of the club, I could get in? Well, that's interesting. That is very interesting. Hey, here's a torch. Let's look at it. It's now 81,000 liters per minute is what modern fire engines can do as opposed to 200 gallons per minute. That's that's pretty significant. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I was wondering about the torch. I thought the torch was weird. Let's look at the sign. Probably has the name of the club. The Diogenes Club. Diogenes Maverick reputation is widely known. Its members revel in their disparate political, social, and intellectual views. The conventional building betrays no hint of the club's eccentric membership. Okay. What else have we got? Door. Look at the door. This dilapidated doorway leads to the interior of the Diogenes Club. I have a, I have a pot. Look at it. This pot is chipped and cracked and partially filled with water. The overzealous fire brigade is probably responsible for the damage and the disappearance of the miniature tree, poplar tree, the plot contained. Given the condition of its twin, it is no great loss. Which I can't look at. Now let's talk to him again. Um. Constable, why is the fire brigade still here? Looking for more leaks, sir. Well, in that case, shouldn't these torches be extinguished? It was the brigade what lit them. They know their business, I suppose. Okay. I tried to see Inspector Lestrade at the yard, but I couldn't get in. That's hardly my fault, Doctor. No, but I thought good intentions might carry some weight. The thought don't count for much, contrary to the old saying. If you're not a club member, I'm afraid I can't let you in. Mr. Holmes is most concerned about the condition of the club. It's a bloody shambles. Targets of artillery practice look better. Part of the roof and west wall are blown out. The stranger's room is completely gone. It didn't even have gas laid on. If I popped in for a moment, I could reassure him that things have been handled expeditiously. I'm sorry, Doctor, but there's nothing more to be done. Now let's not have any trouble. These guys are just... Really, Daly? I'd just like a peek inside so I can give Mr. Holmes a report. I never pegged you for a thrill seeker, Doctor. Whatever do you mean? There's naught to view except the devastation. Place is in ruins. One geezer was carried clean away, another fighting for his life at Bart's. Scenes of disaster excite some people, perverts. Last option. I'm begging you, Constable. I must have a look inside. It can't happen, Doctor. Club members is the only civilians allowed. Them's my orders. Stay here if you must, but you can't cross that line. Ah. Uh, anything else? Nope. Oh, that's it. I've looked at everything. All right. All right. All right. I can't get in. Ugh. This is how the last game went. A lot of just. Okay. Being denied. I guess we'll go to the hospital. <laughs> the signs appear self-explanatory and sufficient. They are in fact useless to the uninitiated. Strangers looking for the morgue have spent hours trying to extricate themselves from the cavernous laundry or kitchens below. Okay. Somebody's coughing. It is to be hoped that the patient is in relatively good health. He is unattended and appears to have been so for some time. Who is coughing? Hey, Super Dave! 
How is it going? <laughs> Matron's white wimple and distinctive headgear are an arresting sight. Her severe and repertory <laughs> manner has encouraged numerous patients to heal themselves or seek treatment <laughs> elsewhere. Okay. What's this? Silence. <laughs> Matron's sign declares that she has confused a hospital waiting room <laughs> with a place of worship. This is just the sort of air that gives medical institutions and those who practice in them an overdeveloped sense of self-importance. Okay. I'll talk to her. Matron, might I look in on one of your recent arrivals? This is not Christie's picture gallery. We have procedures here, visiting schedules, discipline, and so on. Okay. My name is John Watson. I once worked here. I recall. Skillful, but unattentive to hospital regulations. You've put on weight, Doctor. It doesn't suit you. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, Matron. You're looking very well. You've become a Wimple Street hack, no doubt. Or do you keep a surgery for pampered women on Harley Street? I have a general practice in Paddington and... Paddington? I might have guessed. Well, if you'll excuse me, Doctor, some of us have work to do. Okay, let's just keep talking. After Bart's, I served in the Army Medical Department. I was wounded in India. An Army Medico, I'm not surprised. I always say, those who can, do. Those who can't, do take government service. Okay. Matron, I'd like to see Mycroft Holmes. I'm a close friend of the family. But you're not his physician. I can't allow the new intensive care ward to be breached by just anyone off the street. I'm hardly that. Must I apply to the director? Visitors are my province. If you have time to waste, apply by all means. She'll return from Paris in a week or two. You know, she's just standing behind a desk. I mean, what's she gonna do? Like... <laughs> Sir, how long have you been unattended in this wretched hall? For bleed never, if you'll excuse the expression. No one tells me what's going on. I'm not furniture. <laughs> She's like furniture. Is the new patient ward far from here? Miles away, I've heard. I've never been, thank God. Why do you say that? Well, Matron keeps a few special cases there, but mostly it's terminal ones. Morgue's close by, you see. As long as I'm out here, I can't be too sick. <coughs> Valid. <coughs> Who's up here? Patience. Uh, okay. <coughs> I can talk to her now. Oh, wait. Is Dr. McCabe still the staff coroner? He is. As I'm here, I'll just pop in and pay my respects. Will you sign me in? Seeing your professional are recorded. The morgue only, mind. Don't make a nuisance of yourself. Okay. Okay, I got in. I'm in. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. We're in. We're in. Don't dally in the halls, Doctor. 
Ah, here's the morgue. Ooh, this looks super... I don't know. Let's talk to him. Greetings, McCabe. You're well, I hope. Might I have a word? Hmm, hello, Doctor. A word, by all means, but not much more. I'm rather busy with the subject from the Diogenes Club conflagration. My God, that's not Mycroft Holmes. No, no. He's in the new ward. This is Sir Hubert Fortescue. You didn't know the old fellow, I surmise. Well, now you never will. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to change my transparency off because I can't read some of the text. Okay, let's look for corpse. Uh, the body lies uh, supine in on the autopsy table. A nasty gash over his left eye bled profusely, but was certainly not the cause of death. His chest has been opened, and it appears that the M.E. is examining his lungs. Like, apparently he just, like, hmm, okay. I'll just leave it open. Okay, let's, I guess we'll look at him. Uh, an incongruous grin seems fixed on Dr. McCabe's open face. The volume of his work would justify an assistant, but he prefers to perform in solitude. Professional down to his unstarched apron and sensible shoes, he exudes an aura of competence. Well, that's good. good. All right, let's talk to him some more. Talk. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, got more dialogue hmm. options. Was there anything among the old man's effects which marked him as a member of the Diogenes? A lapel pin, for example? His wallet contained only uh, money, no personal uh, items, no jewellery, no I watch. See. Older people frequently disdain such items. I see what we're doing now. Might I ask what your examination of the old man has revealed? I'd like to satisfy your curiosity, but I may say nothing without official authorization. My report will be circulated at the inquest. Really? Might you divulge the cause of Sir Hubert's death? I nearly witnessed it. I'm sorry, Doctor. Without authorization, I'm obliged to keep silent on that subject. As a professional courtesy, you may view his clothes if you wish. You may view his clothes. Okay. As I recall, there was a circuitous passage from here to the old patient ward. Can the new ward be likewise approached from here? Nothing simpler. But, Doctor, a cynical man might suppose the purpose of your visit was not entirely social. I admit it, McCabe. I'm sorry. Matron flatly denied my request to see Mycroft Holmes. The passage is open. Through that door and straight along. But she will not be pleased to learn that you have circumvented her authority. <laughs> I'll take the chance. Better you than me, Dr. Watson. Okay, and look at his clothes. What does that mean? What does that mean? Where are his clothes? Where are his clothes? I don't see any clothes. I see some tools, things, the hospital entrance. Where's the door? Okay, well, here's a cabinet. Let's see if I can open it. There we go. Open. Oh, there's some clothes. Wait. Clothes. Okay, look at the clothes. A selection of badly soiled garments hang forlornly in the closet, along with a charred border tweed jacket. Uh. All right. All 
All right. Yeah, they're in the cabinet, but there's nothing interesting about them. But it looks like I got a way to go to the patient ward. So let's go there. Do, 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 do. Walk into the patient ward. My dear fellow, I had no idea. How are you, sir? We're as comfortable as can be, poor dear, though we won't say so. He didn't he didn't look so good. He doesn't look so good. I had no idea Mr. Holmes' injuries were so extensive. What is his condition? Tolerable, though he won't answer a direct question and rattles on most peculiarly from time to time. However, the party you address is not Mr. Holmes. I beg your pardon? The gentleman in white is not Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes is in bed three, as you can see for yourself. Ah, yes, of course, to be sure. <laughs> okay. What's this? A discarded tea trolley has been pressed into service as a convenience for bedpans, towels, and talcum powder. Okay, makes sense. Got a night table. Damn. Mycroft's table contains an industrial volume of song, several empty ampules, possibly morphine, and a nearly empty water glass. We have a chart. Let's read the chart. Mycroft's vital signs confirm uh, with his traumatic injuries. Conform with his traumatic injuries. He has received large doses of morphine to mitigate his pain. The attending, the attending has diagnosed a contracoup injury, a dangerous type of brain bruise known to cause unpredictability, severe disturbances, and cerebral function. Okay. When not comatose, Mycroft seems delirious. He jerks and twitches, flutters his eyelids, and occasionally mumbles. For hospital policy, he is dressed in an anonymous, ill-fitting horse gown. His personal effects, uh, excepting his ring, are missing. He has been heavily medicated. Okay, let's talk. Let's see if we can talk to him. Wait, 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 wait. Got a ring. Let's examine that ring. Such ornaments are commonly engraved with the wearer's initials or family crest. Mycroft's rings, however, displays a well-formed canine head. For some reason, the dog is the symbol of the Di Dionese Club. Okay. I need that ring. Hello, Mycroft. It's John Watson. Sister treating you well? What's that? Who's there? Oh, Doctor. Fine, 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 fine. Flit on, cheering angel. She is not, I mean, tin shoes. Hmm? Okay. Sherlock's in a funk, sir. I'm trying to revive him. Can you help? Ask me to be he who kills a misery. Not free to be, don't flee. Where's the key? A former tree. Who's the key? What? How? Treachery. Mendacity. If he's free, he should see if I have the key or I ought to be. He just might see conspiracy. Privacy. Oh, it's a terrible thing to hear a grown man speak drivel. Rhyming drivel. If you don't mind, sister, I'd appreciate a bit of privacy. Well, excuse me, I'm sure. Oh, I can take his ring? Hmm. What happened? I'll tell Sherlock you're in good hands. Please, 
Don't interfere with the patient, sir. No touching. Very unsanitary. Did I get it? No, I didn't get it. Van talk to her. Will you please bring Mr. Holmes some fresh water? I mustn't leave the ward. My patients depend on me. Please make an exception. I'll watch your patients. I'm a doctor. Very well. Anywise, I'm perishing for a cup of tea. Ah, uh, okay. That gets her out. Okay, now I, now I can take the ring. <clears throat> Which will get me into the club. That'll get me into the club. I'll try to put this to good use, Mycroft. I can talk to him. Let's see what his. I wonder what his chart says. Have you comprehended any of your neighbor's rambling, sir? I surmise there is no help forthcoming from this quarter. Okay. No, I can't look at his chart. Man, he does not look good. I don't know. I guess the thing is, if his brain is intact, then he may be better off than Mycroft. Oh. Okay, several graphically gruesome portraits are hung on the wall. One might legitimately question their suitability for display in a sick ward. Okay. Let's open this door. You took your time, Doctor. I was about to send out a search party. <laughs> Thank you, Matron. As always, you are the soul of civility. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, we can... I think we can get in now. Alright. Why didn't you say you was a member? Save us both some aggro. Alright, I'm in. I'm in. I am in. Okay. Dutch doors partially conceal a small antechamber off the hall. Pedestal. Save it a dusting of ash, this wooden pedestal stands surprisingly undamaged. Yeah, I got in. Wahoo! A marble bust of a bearded ancient broke when it collided with the floor. The fire brigade should not be discounted as the cause of its current condition. Three portraits were hung in the entry, though now scorched. The countenance of one gentleman is recognizably that of Mycroft Holmes. Got a bar. Let's look at that. The wooden bar is such the is much the worse for wear as a result of the explosion and subsequent fire. Okay. Right. I think that's it. Oh wait. 
A box. There's a box. A small shallow box lies amidst the sodden mass. Uh, let's look at it. Let's examine it. The tortoise shell container may have held jewelry or snuff. It appears to have once had a cover. The magnitude of human tragedy is not measured by the numbers who endure it. A simple, solitary, displaced possession of a particular man is most affecting. Are there other such signs about? Okay. We already did the bar. Nothing. Walk in. More bar. Archway. The double doors to the lounge were blown off their hinges, only the splintered remains of the frame. Only the splintered remains of the frame remain. Okay. Where do we go? I feel like we're missing. I feel like we can go in here. Oh, enter. Oh, we gotta click on stuff and say enter. It's kind of weird. But I guess it is what it is. Oh, I hear dripping water. This place is dark. Kind of hard to see. No need to take unnecessary risks. That pile of rubble could collapse at any time. We got a statue. The marble torso of a nude female has been violently propelled to the floor by the explosion. The unfortunate lady, who was already sans arms, has lost her head in the last. Clock? Damn it. The blast embedded metal fragments and glass shivers, slivers, in the walnut cabinet. Besides the grandfather's mangled works, a small round face from quite a different clock mingles which, with much anonymous debris. Okay. Touch. Dr. Watson, what are you doing in here, sir? It's unsafe. You'll have to get out. None but authorized persons are allowed. Okay. Were it not for the enamel square decorated with Roman numerals, this hodgepodge of burned wood, broken glass, and twisted metal might not be right. Yes. Weird, it's like there's lock face. The small face is about four inches in diameter. Most of the left side is encrusted with a suspicious sandy substance. Both hands are entirely missing. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Intriguing. This residue reminds me of some bad business I saw in the army. Let's take it. 
We take it. Hey! Did we have a point sound in this game? Dr. Watson, you should be ashamed of yourself. You'll have to get out. None but authorized persons are allowed. Horrible mess, no? All right. I think, I think we, I think, I think we may have gotten like All right, let's go to the uh back to the Sherlock home. Sherlock Holmes home. Mm -hmm. Wiggins is sleeping again. Sherlock isn't here. I see. I, I I like that they made this room layout the same as. In fact, they went way out of their way to make it the same as the uh, first game. It's practically identical. Um, I think down to the knife there, the labs over here, the periodic table. Um, I'm guessing if I go over here, I will see the, um, I'm guessing I will see the bullet holes in the wall. Yep, there they are, the bullet holes in the wall. Right there. And there's a desk, a desk. Yeah, it's, it's exactly the same. I mean, it looks nicer. Higher graphics, you know, better graphics, but it looks the same. I like it. I like it. All right. Do we need to talk to Sherlock, or do we need to do something else? Is the question. Let's see. Use the lab table. I think we need... Let's see if we can figure out how to deal with this substance. It's on the clock. Okay, we're sitting down on the chair. We're now standing the up. The clock face residue looks suspiciously like something I saw in India. If I'm right, I'll do more than engage Holmes' attention. Okay. All right, is that it? Is that all I really wanted to do? Oh, inventory. Analyze. Okay, we got, we got an analyze tool. Analyze. Oh, there we go. Analyze clock face at lab table. Okay, this seems positive here. Okay. We're doing something. Doing something. Something's happening. I think if I warm a sample in a sulfide bath, a black precipitate would provide confirmation. Okay. Okay. The last game did all this for me. I'm going to have to do this myself. Oh my gosh. So I need to warm the sample in a sulfite bath. Okay. Okay. All right, sodium sulfate, I probably need that. Whoa, that's a lot. Holy crap, that's a lot of sodium sulfate. 
Okay, that's just so I need some water. Some water in there. Ooh. Slick. Okay, let's use uh We have a stirring rod, glass rod. Let's use that. Stir the contents. Oh. Okay. Oh, here's the clock face. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's, let's um. Man, this is this is this is nuts. Um, this is a scraper thingy. Oh, there we go. We can scrape the sand off. Okay. All right, we put that in there. All right. Uh, I think we were said, now let's, uh, we're on a beaker under a Bunsen burner. Let's light it. Sulfide bath. We got a sulfide bath. Okay. Whoa. What in blue blazes was that? Are you trying to kill us? I'm trying to satisfy your partiality for proofs, and I wanted your attention. You have it. My experiment confirmed that residue I recovered from the Diogenes was explosive fulminate. A gas main was ruptured, it exploded, but that explosion was caused by an incendiary device. Let me gather my thoughts, Watson. I am beginning to suspect a strange and peculiarly terrible chain of events, and Doctor, thank you for showing me my duty. Fulminate of mercury. The black precipitate is decisive. Micro felled by a bomb. Damnable villains. An outrageous and unconscionable act. The misbegotten maggots. If I had them before me, I could not be trusted. Have you been ingesting stimulants, Holmes? Let me have some tea brought up. I'm as sober as Carry Nation, Watson, and more determined. Let us get on with it. I will have the fiends who tried to kill my brother. Okay. Wow. That was not too bad. They told me what to. They told me what to do, and it was pretty easy. Sulfide bath, warm, and a sulfide bath. Okay, that made sense. Okay, now what do I gotta do? Okay, now I am. Uh, I'm Holmes, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's uh talk to. Oh, now we got the journal. We got the journal. Okay. We have the journal now. Close it. Okay, let's talk to Holmes. And get some info. Have you begun your journal entries, Doctor? Any matter in which you take an interest may have enduring public consequences. Did you receive any assistance from Scotland Yard? I never got past Constable Burns. <sighs> Obstructive moron. My brother is nearly killed in a vicious assault and you can't even get in to see Lestrade. Don't let anger dim your wit. The Yard is ignorant of our Diogenes discovery. That's a good thing, as you would ordinarily be the first to say. We don't yet know what variety of foul play we're dealing with. Your pardon, Watson. My anger at the would-be assassins has made me muzzy. I have a fierce thirst. Only justice will slake it. I think you mean revenge. So be it. They are the same to me now. Your investigative efforts expose several productive leads, Watson. But no obvious starting point for our inquiry. They say a good beginning ensures a good outcome. We are not so credulous to think so. There is more here than a common attempted murder. 
So I surmised. The matter will not admit of a simple resolution, but I will not rest until the wretch responsible for this outrage against my brother is punished. What items might have assisted your own inquiries, Watson? The bull's eye wouldn't have been amiss, and a nimble brain would have helped. The former is here somewhere. We can secure it. The latter is more than sufficient. Don't troll for compliments, Doctor. Wait, what does he say? What, 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 what does he say? The bullseye would have been a miss, and a nimble brain would have helped. What does that mean? Does that mean we have to get something called a bullseye or something like that? Hmm, I don't know. Keep talking. Did you collect other evidence at the Diogenes that might assist us? I couldn't perform a proper search. It's dark as Guinness in there. The damp and unstable conditions didn't help, and Forbes was about. Hmm, yes, he will complicate matters, but the damage to the rooms may be of interest, and there may be other physical evidence we must return eventually. You know my methods, Watson. It is the scene of a crime. There is a matter I should like to put to Inspector Lestrade. Can the Yard assist in our inquiries? Mm, expectations are low, and your point about official ignorance is well taken. The Inspector has neither need nor capacity to know what we know. Still, his title might become the rough water we'll confront. Okay. Nothing. All right. Okay, this is exactly the same. Okay, so what have we got? Utilize. It's a marvelous apparatus that produces the soda water, so essential for the proper whiskey and soda. Unpredictable devices have a tendency to explode, which is why it's over here and not by the fire. I remember that from the last game. Okay, let's look at our desk. Open it. Couldn't in the last game. Numerous bits of paper, a useless diary, and Watson's checkbook have been removed from the interior and presumably have found a home elsewhere. The remaining items are a hair trigger, a billy stick, and a bullseye, which, uh, interesting. A hair trigger pistol. Look. For trick shooting with small caliber ammunition, no firearm compares with a delicate single shot hair trigger. Impractical, if not possibly dangerous for ordinary use, it will never leave home. Bull, whoops. Bull's eye lantern. Pick it up. Directory. Skim. Nothing. Along with, among the notices of common persons, the Mesmures Kelly have incorporated selected listings from Debrit's Guide to the Peerage. Okay. Billy Stick. Let's pick that up. Pick it up. Seems good. Seems like a good thing to have. Is 
You've often it. said Billy is overmatched for self-defense. Quite right, Doctor. Something more resolute is in order. Use your own judgment. So we don't pick it up? No. We just have the lantern. Okay. Sheet music. We can't get it this time. But there's one thing that is different. There was a table here, and now there's a now there is a a um a sofa. I believe there was a table in the previous game because there was sheet music and a violin on it. But maybe it was a uh drop a table, a lamp. Oh a book. Let's look at the book. This volume of French criminologist Alphane Burton classification is astral previous studies. It's only slightly more exhausting. Okay. Stationery, a piece of Bengali pottery. In the translation of Harvey Classics, De Mucordis et Sanguines and Animal Bus are scattered on Watson's oak desk. Since his marriage, he keeps nothing in the drawers. Since his marriage, okay. Implies the timeline here. Read. Read the newspapers. And there's a tidy as well. Nothing. Tidy. What's the point? This battle has been lost. Okay. Fire scarred skin might be consigned to a dustbin were it not required to conceal a scorched section of Mrs. Hudson's floor. <laughs> table, chart, clock. I know what all this stuff is. Okay, I think we're done here. Let's go to Scotland Yard. And we will um, probably be able to get in. Take your pistol, will you, Watson? There's no telling what this case will bring. For once I am ahead of you, Holmes. It is in my pocket. Oh, okay. Pistol. Pistol. We got a pistol. Okay. Daily Telegraph, that's new. First off, I'm gonna go here. Oh look, I look like I'm dressed up as Sherlock. I, I changed my clothes. Hello, Augie. Anything doing? Not enough. Give people what they want and where's the thanks. But I'll forget my manners. Condolences on your brother's demise. Your expression is premature. Mycroft is alive. Oh, but near death, surely. I have it on the best authority. Your source is impeachable. Demand a refund. What more have you heard about the Diogenes Club explosion? A working stiff don't have time for idle chatter, Mr. Holmes. 
Even surmise or there's a price. On principle, I never purchase information. Perhaps you can suggest how we might overcome this scruple. Indeed, I can. Ante up a shilling and we'll play a little free card Monty for the tidbit. Best two out of three. You win, the info's free. Lose, it's yours for ten bob. Eh? Is this, is this winnable? Is this, is this a winnable game? It's been a pleasure, Mr. Holmes. But Luck, I suspect, has nothing to do with it. You can keep the shilling, but I won't pay more for useless information. Oggy, are you always the rich can afford? As you seem to appreciate the platitude, you might reflect on the one that declares that there is no rest for the wicked. Feel like being taught your business, Augie? You can always try. Aha! There you go. Contrary to the adage, Augie, the hand is not always quicker than the eye. Yours is prosecutably slow. Have a heart. Keep it to yourself. Here's a nugget. Two hard Irish lads was in the city, both of them familiar with the niceties of Jellignite and mean enough to use it. Trashing a fancy English club might just suit their fancy. Names? Whereabouts? No names. Suppose I tell the police that this game has never been on the square and that you've nicked them all. No need to get violent. I heard those boyos was looking for a party name of uh, Boyd something. A coal miner I heard. That's all I got, I swear. That may be what the police call a lead. I have to be somewhat more discriminating. Okay, is that, all? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so I call him cheating. Okay. A quiet watch, Constable? As I prefer it, Mr. Holmes. I'd like a word with Lestrade. You're not alone, sir, but the inspector is engaged, and he's left particular orders not to be disturbed even by you. Really? I have that, I find that, I find that difficult to believe. I find that highly dubious. Whoops. See if I can add. See if there's anything else. Is Augie still schooling you at Three Card Monte? The man's an unnatural wizard. I never win. I swear he could retire to Blackpool on the brass he's taken off me. It's a mugs game, Constable. But nobody wins all the time. You want to know the secret to Augie's success? Only slightly less than the Ripper's real name. Might I see Lestrade on the strength of it? The door is yours. Once inside, you're on your own hook. Fine. After Augie manipulates the cards, tell him to move away from the table. Say that if your card is not one of those face down, he's in for a stay at Pentonville. I guarantee you'll start to recoup some of your losses. 
It been bombing a card, then. Some secrets are just too tawdry to tell, Constable. <laughs> Yeah, this looks a little bit different. This is different. This is not the same as the first game, but I think this is supposed to be maybe an upgraded station. Um, I think it's called the Metropolitan um, Police Station or something. Where's Lestrade? There he is. The inspector appears fixed to his chair by the energy of the young woman who addresses him. The young woman. I'm going over, apparently. A well-dressed young woman commands Lestrade's attention. Her gestures declare her distress. Nevertheless, her voice is neatly inaudible, nearly inaudible, as she pours out her apparently endless tale of woe. Okay. There's an older woman. Let's look at her. A neatly put together old deer nods knowingly and mumbles in the gentle direction of no one in particular. She is a regular visitor at the yard. A family relationship with Lestrade has been suggested. She makes no eye contact as she carries on a private Colloquy with unknown beings. Colloquy. Colloquy? It's not colloquy. Okay, let's look at him. Looks about the same as the last game. Awarded the Victoria Cross for conspicuous bravery during the Sepoy Mutiny. Master Sergeant Jeremy Duncan controls the station with crisp efficiency, unquestioned authority. His formal bearing belays a harmless affection for idle chatter and slanderous gossip. Okay. An inmate. Let's look at him. This distressed person awaits transportation to the lunatic ward at St. Mary's, the police surmise that his erratic behavior may turn violent. The conclusion might be premature. He loses his breath during his rantings, and his complexion alters. Okay. There's Gregson and Lestrade. Sergeant, might I have a word with Inspector Lestrade? You might, Mr. Holmes, if he were free, but as you see, he's not. Dissipating his meager talents on trivialities, no doubt. You'd know best. If you wish to wait, you may take a seat. Conversation happened and I didn't hear it. That was weird. When might Lestrade be available, Sergeant? I couldn't say, sir. She's been burning his ear for a longish spell and shows no sign of weakening. I got tongue lashed for interrupting. What's her problem? Claims her brother's being wrongfully detained. Flapdoodle, of course. But the inspector's going the extra mile. There have been allegations of high-handedness. He may see Gregson looking over his shoulder, if you take my meaning. Sergeant, has the elderly female party become a permanent fixture? You might say, Mr. Holmes. She used to char here. Now she thinks we're guests in her parlor. Haven't the heart to disabuse her. <laughs> okay. Sergeant, why is that man being held in the lockup? Nutty as the proverbial fruitcake, as you can hear. He's waiting for a lift to St. Mary's. What is the delay? That woman claims he's not bunkers. She says he's sick. She is indubitably correct, but how sick and from what? Uh, 
Okay. Tobias Gregson, his eyes always fixed on career advancement, spends his leisure reviewing open cases. He devotes special attention to those handled by Inspector Lestrade. Unbridled ambition may lead to unfortunate consequences. Okay. Dr. Watson is a doctor, like an actual doctor. May a patient's maladies be diagnosed from their ravings? A specialist might be able to. I'll wager alcohol plays a part in this episode. Is it current drink, a history of abuse, or a seizure? Hmm, it's a fair question. Note the particularity of his tics and gyrations. Hmm, they are suggestive. And the alterations of his complexion. An even better observation. I have been as previous as the police. The man is ill, some form of epilepsy perhaps. Sergeant, I believe your prisoner is ill. There's no doubt about it, Mr. Holmes. Mentally defunct, I'd say. Criminally insane. No telling what he'll get up to on the loose. I think not. He's an epileptic. Dr. Watson will support my observation. Well, I'm loath to contradict you, Mr. Holmes. But you say so, just don't cut it in this instance. The bloke's loopy. Every police station has a decent working library. The yard possesses, in addition to the Buckram bound collections of results cases and of legal treatments, volumes devoted to special subjects like bloodstain and a recent edition of the Great Encyclopedia Britannica. Okay, portrait. The thing about this game that um, I've noticed which is, I think, maybe different in this one than the previous one, is you have to look at everything. Victoria, Queen of the United Kingdom and Empress of India, is in her 53rd year of her reign. In this picture, she wears her golden jubilee gown. Oh, the bullpen is here, so we're flipped around. The bullpen was... Okay, interesting. Sergeant, are you familiar with the Encyclopedia Britannica? The greatest collection of book learning on Earth, my dear pal, we said. That as may be. I believe its articles on medicine are considered authoritative. Next to God, they're all the truth there is, sir. Ah, said so. If you'd like to save the inspector's reputation from careening downhill and protect the yard from litigation for unlawful arrest, you should know of the latest research on epilepsy. Pay special attention to the sections on grand mal and psychomotor seizures. That man is sick. Jensen, the man in the lockup may be epileptic. Look up grand mal seizures in the EB and convey your findings to Inspector Lestrade. Right away, Sard.
God, have the incarcerated gentleman cleaned up immediately and release him to his sister's custody. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Another scandal here would be damaging. Ah. Ah, oh, the music kind of changed. The strand appears to be knee deep in paperwork, the limitless scourge of a policeman's duty. He is oblivious to most everything around him. Let's we talk to him now. You're finally ready to resume your duties, Lestrade. I appreciate your assistance on that medical matter, Mr. Holmes, but the arch tone is out of order. What can I do for you? Evidently nothing, even though there is more to the Diogenes disaster than the pathetic official examination has divulged. Suspicions are your trade, Mr. Holmes. Proof pays the bills in police business. Proof? I'll give you proof. If your people... We wondered, Inspector, if... I'm perfectly capable of speaking for myself, Watson. Okay. If you won't investigate the explosion further, you might at least assist me. How? Give me carte blanche at the explosion site and the morgue. Something sinister is going on, Lestrade, if only you had the wit to see it. I will ignore the insult in deference to your fragile emotional state. If you want to waste your time, I won't stop you. But you'll excuse me if I don't squander my department's resources to gratify your overdeveloped and theoretic suspicions. Without well-founded supposition, Lestrade, reason staggers and the mind dies. You might remember that. Wow, he is a little bit more of a jerk in this game than he was in the previous game. He seemed to be a lot more cooperative last time. Persons whose business cannot be similarly concluded are asked to take a seat. Experienced men delivered he to do so. Flee at the moment, knowing that these instruments of torture masquerading as chairs have caused a sizable fraction of the city's cases to go cases of lumbago. Okay. Well, I think I am going to call it a night. Um... 1 a.m. for me, so I should probably get headed to bed. Um, 